Hello and welcome to this HashiConf session. My name is Kyle Ruddy from the Technical Marketing Group here at HashiCorp and I am extremely excited to bring you this session. It's been a long time coming. And that is of course because Terraform 1.0 is now. Now if you paid attention to HashiConf's prior, you've probably seen Kristen Lambert's session about the path to 1.0. You know, hitting several different criteria, but if you look at Terraform, the language, it's been through quite the journey. So taking a look at Terraform past, if we go all the way back to 2011, this was kind of the light bulb moment about thinking through the workflow in which, in which we wanted to you know, provision and manage infrastructure in a declarative way. But we wanted to do that against several different services instead of maybe just perhaps a, a singular dedicated service. So then fast forward a little bit, nothing had really hit the market that, that piqued this interest. So introduced was Terraform 0.1. Then there was so much excitement around it and so much activity. Uh, we actually were able to release 0.2 that same year and it featured three new providers to start interacting with some of the various other services that had come along. Then fast forwarding a couple versions and a couple years, we get to Terraform 0.7. And the big milestone here was 500 different contributors, which is a massive amount for that small period of time. Then fast forwarding just a single year, but yet a couple different versions, we get to Terraform 0.10. And with this one, we hit another major milestone of more than a thousand contributors. Now, if you'll remember, this also came with another little bit uh, of change in the way with, that we access providers. And that kind of queued up the release of the Terraform registry, which was introduced in 2017 as well. Then fast forwarding a couple more years, we get to 2019, and with that came Terraform 0.12, and of course the introduction of HCL2. So that was a little bit about Terraform present, let's, or past, let's look at Terraform present, because there are some significant milestones that we hit across the, that uh, time period. First and foremost, contributors from the community. We've hit more than 1,500 contributors. This is massive to see the amount of adoption and support that's come in from the community. Uh, hopefully some of you have started seeing some of those gift boxes that have been coming out. Uh, so very much thank you for all that you've done. Then we also have a vast expanse in the ecosystem itself. So the Terraform registry now features more than 1,000 different providers. And it also features more than 5,000 different modules that have been contributed as well. Then we get into downloads. So if we think about the Terraform binary itself, it's now being downloaded more than a million times per week. And overall, it's been downloaded more than a million times or a hundred million times, which is insane. That's, that's such a large amount of downloads. It's, it's wild. But I also want to call out a special thank you and uh, appreciation for our certification team, because this next metric couldn't be done without them, as well as the more than 10,000 Terraform associates that are, that are out there and have taken the exam. Uh, and, and passed it. So that's, a, that's another fantastic milestone that Terraform has been able to reach. So with that, let's get into Terraform 1.0. So a little bit about why this is significant. Uh, you know, if, if you haven't been wondering about the, the how we get from a 0.x release into a 1.0 release, a lot of this comes down to uh, being able to support the scale of pretty much any company or organization, you know, going from startups to the global 2000 or even individual DevOps practitioners, you know, millions of practitioners are choosing Terraform as the way to manage and provision their infrastructure. 
Then we get into some of the stability that comes with something like a Terraform 1.0 release because it ensures stability as well as improving that workflow so that regardless of what workload is being provisioned and managed, it's going to be done consistently so anybody on those DevOps teams can manage them in a straightforward manner. And speaking of which, it comes down to usability as well. Meaning that no matter what service is being interacted with, you still have the ability to interact, manage, and provision those resources, regardless of whether it's maybe an on-premises environment, like say maybe a Cisco ASA, or perhaps a VMware vSphere environment, to some of those cloud services, such as an Amazon AWS, or a Microsoft Azure, or a Google Cloud Compute. Or maybe it could even be a mix of everything in between for a, you know, either a hybrid environment or a multi-cloud environment as well. In the end, Terraform 1.0 is here to provide that stability and usability across the board for any of those services that we have providers for. All right, let's get into a little bit on the, what's known as maintenance side of Terraform 1.0. One of the key parts here is the upgrade process. Throughout the 1.x product lifecycle, existing workflows are going to continue to work without a requirement for upgrade tools, refactoring, or other code changes. That's a tremendous improvement if you think about that Terraform past slide uh, from some of the things that we've gone through to get to this 1.0 release. Then we also have the workflow support. So we are planting a flag in the ground and saying that Terraform 1.0 will have a maintenance period of up to 18 months, where us here at HashiCorp will investigate bugs and release features throughout the entire 1.x lifecycle, which is a tremendous improvement. All right, so let's get into my favorite time of every session, and that's demo time. So in this demo, we're gonna talk about some of the newest features that are coming to Terraform 1.0. And the first one that we wanna go over is interoperability. And so what we have here is a Terraform cloud environment where we've taken a fairly simple web application and deconstructed it into several different workspaces that we can run several different versions of Terraform. So here in our first one, we're going to be creating a resource group within Azure. And thanks to our new workspace overview page, we can see a lot of good information right off the bat, including that we're running Terraform 0.15.2 to create one single resource, which we assume is the resource group. But if we click on the show details, we can go down to see the results of our apply finish. And this is part of a beta program that's going on right now. We can see that we've created an Azure RM resource group that's called My Resource Group inside our Terraform configuration file. But then on the outside, we can see that that's created a resource group name of Ruddy Demo as part of the outputs, as well as our Terraform version. And that'll be more important here in just a second. But now as we try and build to get to that web application, we also need to create some network stuff. So here we're using Terraform 0.13.6 and creating six resources. Now that seems kind of like a lot. But thanks to uh, some integration with our version control system, our workspace overview has our readme integrated into it. So if we scroll down a little bit towards the bottom, we can see the resources that are created in here, in which case it includes some security configurations such as access through SSH as well as HTTP. But it also features a public IP, which if we scroll back up, we will see the end result of that being a fully qualified domain name. If we reference our outputs here, we can take that FQDN URL, open that up in a new tab, and here we have a default page for an Apache configuration that's been set up in a virtual machine that was pre-provisioned. So speaking of that virtual machine, let's head over to that workspace and see how that was configured. In this case, we're using Terraform 0.14.9 to create five different resources that make up that virtual machine that we saw the Apache uh, default page for. In our outputs, we have our credentials that are being marked as sensitive, as well as our Terraform version and our virtual machine name. Now here's where those outputs get really important 
because now we're going to switch to our web app workspace. And as part of this, we're using Terraform 0.12.30 in order to populate the web page that we're going to see on that uh, Ubuntu image. So here we're going to queue up our plan. So it's going to go ahead and create all of our resources for that web page. However, because I want to show you that, you know, nothing, there's no magic going on behind the curtain or up my sleeve. So here's our variables. We're not connecting to Azure in any way, shape or form. We're not storing any SSH keys in there. Everything is being done through our main configuration file, which we can click on through our workspace overview page. Then in our main configuration file here, we can see the usage of the Terraform remote state data source, which is reaching out to those other workspaces to grab those outputs so that we can populate the web page. So we're able to SSH into that system. We're also able to pass it in those different Terraform versions as well as some other information. And we do that through a very simple shell script just called deploy app. And just for the sake of clarity, let's take a brief look at our deploy app shell script. We're just creating a very simple index.html page, which is going to output some of those outputs that, uh, that we stored in environmental variables, such as the Terraform version for each of our workspaces, as well as some of the other important information. So now once we return back to Terraform Cloud, we can see that our latest operation has completed. It's been applied. And if we reconnect out to our FQDN, we can see that now we have a cat image, which is the end result of this web application. However, we can also see that this was all done through Terraform 0.12. We can see that our resource group name was sourced from 0.15.2. Our FQDN was sourced from 0.13, as well as our virtual machine name was referenced from Terraform 0.14. And really this all goes to show you the interoperability between all of those different Terraform versions to continue to support one another as we go through the upgrade process. So speaking of the upgrade process, let's take a look at what that looks like for our different workspaces that are in this environment. So going back to our Terraform cloud environment, we're gonna switch back to our resource group. And once we're in there, we can change our Terraform version simply by clicking on the 0.15, which takes us to our general settings, which then we can choose our 1.0 version. Once we click on save, we'll notice that our workspace has been updated to use that new version. However, we want to run this against several different workspaces as well. So one of my favorite things is using Terraform to automate our Terraform environment. So we're jumping over to our terminal session here and we're running an apply against a configuration that set up that Terraform cloud environment through the TFE provider. Once this completes, we're gonna see that three of those workspaces are now using Terraform 1.0 instead of the prior versions. And then if we switch back to Terraform Cloud, we can see that even the description for this workspace has been updated to show that it's using Terraform 1.0 because we want anyone who clicks into this workspace to know that ahead of time so that it's not a surprise. Now we're gonna queue a new plan because we have to generate those new outputs for that Terraform version. And then we're gonna make use of run triggers, which is a Terraform Cloud feature that just runs each operation from each workspace throughout the next as it's been configured to recreate all of those Terraform version outputs, as well as make any changes to the configurations that are necessary. Now we're gonna use some movie magic to kind of fast forward through this process so that we don't have to wait for each workspace to complete. But once we get to our web app that's been applying, we can click into that workspace and see our updates. Now this one is continuing to use 0.12.30, so keep that in mind. But if we go down to our FQDN and open that up in a new tab, there we go. We can see our information has been updated. We can see that our resource group name is being sourced from Terraform 1.0, as well as our FQDN, as well as our virtual machine name. Just showing you, you know, even how much a lot of these Terraform versions have improved the upgrade process throughout the years, you know, even going back to 0 
However, I will throw out a caveat. You know, this was a simple configuration setup. So this may or may not work in your environment this way. Definitely check the upgrade guides for the versions as you're upgrading through the entire process. So that was a great demo that took a look at the interoperability between the different Terraform versions, as well as a little bit about the upgrade process as we go throughout the 1.x lifecycle. So to learn more, first and foremost, 1.0 is available today for download, as well as usage in Terraform Cloud. If you're looking for some more information, check out the Terraform 1.0 announcement blog. Stay tuned for the Terraform 1.0 webinar coming in just about a week. And then also, right after this session, we have Christian Lambert's follow-up session to the path to Terraform 1.0 with an engineering look at how we got to where we are today. Thank you. Thank you.